Today at ShopTap.com, we're going to be replacing rubber trunk lid boots on a Mark 7 GTI. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about rubber trunk lid boots. This happens to be something that uh, these can break and especially are likely to do so if you're potentially if you make a mistake and or maybe the vehicle's got a little age on it because this plastic gets a little brittle when you're installing an led taillight harness either old one or new one you have to run wires through this boot which potentially can get broken and if you do not get it sealed properly you can have a water leak so obviously this is an important part for that vehicle and you may end up with a water leak coming through uh, if you break this boot and and do not replace it so we're going to be talking about a DIY and how to do that. And, and one thing I want to note is we've had people talk about uh, that you don't need to remove this to get stuff through. That may be the case. It probably depends on, on the person and the tools you're working with to make that happen. Uh, the snake we've, been, we've worked with to make this happen actually does, doesn't allow the flexibility to allow that through. There probably are some out there that might. So just something to be aware of. But if you have broken yours, and ours are because they've been apart a million times uh, because we've had obviously multiple taillight harnesses and development and all kinds of other things. Uh, we are gonna show you replacing a one and talk about replacing the other. Okay, so here we have our boots in question that we're gonna be looking at today. And we are going to be showing you about replacing this one right here. And this is how they break right here. There's a clip that you have to remove when you're, when you're installing them. You can take like a screwdriver and you can kind of press down on them. You have to kind of push in and then up. If these get aged or it's cold when you're doing it, it's very easy, easy to um, uh, crack them. So something to consider that when you're doing stuff like this is, is maybe heat them up uh, to allow that to get in and out much, much more easily uh, will prevent it from breaking or make it more likely because the plastic is more malleable when you're working with that. Now that we see we have this out, we have, we have a couple wires to deal with. One of them is this antenna wire right here, which we can just push in on this connector and then slide that off. Now that one's free to move. Now we also have this ground, which we can take off, uh, which is a uh, Torx. And then there's also the washer jet. This is actually where the, the hose for the rear washer jet for the rear window goes. So you actually have to remove that. So we actually are going to recommend something like this. This is a 45 degree pick. We'll have a link to ours in the description below where you can check that out. But what you need to do is get in there and pop that clip back. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and then we'll pull it out and show you kind of what that looks like. So if we look close here, there's this clip. It slides in and out and it is just a square. So what you're going to do is actually get in there get underneath this and you can kind of pop it down from the sides and you're going to get it extended out all the way. And so what you're going to do is as you can see here, you can kind of have that extended away. It'll all, that collar being back will allow it to pull off that. Now you got to be careful. What I would recommend is take two fingers and kind of get in there and then try to put pressure on it back. Cause these are, remember these are just plastic. So these things are pretty brittle and you don't want to pull too hard on this. Otherwise you could have a problem. Now we have our Torx right here. This is the ground and we're going to loosen this guy up and you just open that up and slide this eyelet out and you'll see that you'll now have the space you need to slide this down with the exception of these, which this wire actually runs to the other antenna cable. Now we have this other antenna cable here and we just push back. give it a little wiggle, and then you can kind of fish that through here. Now what I recommend to get this through here is, these are kind of hooked in here, which you can try to pull them through. It's not super easy. What I would say you might want to consider is just grab a razor blade, make sure you don't cut the cable, and then you can kind of just pull these through. And then on the way back in, you can either tape them on there or use a zip tie, a small zip tie to, to fix them in place uh, and get that all squared away. Now for this section, what I would suggest is pull through what you have available right now and get it out of the deck lid first 
Again, you don't want to make sure you get too crazy with this hose because this is a plastic hose that can be brittle, especially as these cars age. So you want to try to keep this thing uh, unbent as much as possible. All right, so now we need to replace this and we need to get it out on the bottom side. So let's go on the bottom side here and pop this out. All right, now we have the bottom popped off as well. And now we can worry about sliding it through. And obviously you want to straighten this stuff out as much as possible. These do appear as though they're hooked together. So you do have to pull them through together. Now what you may consider doing, depending on your preferences, you can cut this thing and break off these ends if you don't want to slide it through. But most likely sliding it through uh, like this is going to be your easiest bet. Now what seems to work the best is kind of slow pressure here. Uh, click that back in place. I'm going to lose that clip on the way out. And now we're pretty free. and all of our stuff is out. What I would suggest doing is cleaning some of these surfaces, uh, the mounting surfaces here and here, just to make sure that when you do click your new one back in, it gets a pretty clean seal. All right, now when you're installing these, these are the same for left and right side, but they are not the same for top and bottom. So this part with the uh, this little, whatever this is here in the middle, actually goes on the bottom side and the top side is flat, as you can see there. So. We're gonna feed that through, make sure you have that right. I would always start with the longest thing feeding through. This is not gonna be super easy and you may end up having to use a snake to get stuff through here. But let's see if we can avoid that. All right, so after looking at this, I think there's no way we're gonna be able to get this through with a snake or without a snake. This is definitely going to have to be attached in a way. I don't think this, this hose is gonna get through in any other way because of how tough this thing is to get in there. Might be able to feed it in. I'd be, I'm a little nervous about breaking this. Again, because this is something that's kind of a plastic pipe, you don't want to go too nuts here. Now, what I think might work is, is that we can use them together to kind of pull things through. What I would suggest is tape these two to this wire here because that will pull them through on their own. So that's actually probably not a bad idea and can help us make this process much easier for these two ones. So we're gonna tape these actually to the harness itself. Okay, so we have those all taped on. One thing I wanted to make kind of point out is what I've found to work when running things through stuff like this is because it's rubber and things get hung up, especially edges of connectors and stuff like that, is if you kind of make a tape like ramp up here, it's less likely to hang up on things as you're coming through. So just a, just something that's worth considering when you're doing this and can make your life a heck of a lot easier uh, when you go down that road. Now, what I did just do here is take this pick, it's a hook, and once I got it in there, most of the way I was able to grab the hook end, hook it through the end of this connector, and grab onto it. Now it allowed me to pull this thing through pretty easily here, so uh, that's actually extremely useful in this. Otherwise, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to grab that. You can, kind of, you'd have to try to continue to kind of feed it through. So. Uh, something to consider when you're working with that. Now, again, same deal, kind of pull through a little bit at a time here. Kind of solid pressure. If you ever feel things like this when you're doing it get hung up, you want to kind of back out and, and reset. So if it feels like anything not good is happening, you always should take into consideration that something might be hung up and that you could have a problem. 
All right, and now we're through there. So now we're we're through the woods with the tough part. We got to feed this the rest of this little loop through, and so I'm gonna get a good angle there, and then pull here, and that should be what we need to do. Yep, there we go. And now we're through and make sure you rotate this into the correct location so that you're gonna to wanna to get all this stuff set in place. What I would suggest before you even go crazy and lock anything in place is that you actually make sure that everything is, is how you should be. So I would suggest take this, let's install everything, make sure everything's good before you latch these in place because obviously if it's broken in the first place, you don't wanna to have to do it again after the fact. Now we got our tape off and we can feed this one in first, probably just it's less flexible. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed that one in first. And give ourselves a little space here. And now I'll feed this one through. this again and get this set in place now we got that locked in place now what I would suggest because that is a 90 degree and there's not a ton of space here is uh, latch that thing back in place the black part once you have it set where it needs to be and then you can kind of use your finger and push on it now you also could use maybe like a pick like this and kind of hook around in there but i would not suggest to push too hard on the end here because if you end up pushing too hard too far away from where it meets the actual connection you actually could end up snapping off the end of that and then you'll really have a bad time if you have to worry about replacing that or if it leaks every time you use it uh, or something of that nature. So uh, you do not want to go down that road. So pretty simple here. Plug that guy back in. And again, make sure the orientation of it's good so you don't have anything twisted around. And then this is going to go over here. And set that in place. And then this is going to go up and over here. Now we are all set there and we can snap this bottom part in place. Now, as you get this back end in, you're going to want to seat this in place properly. And then you can use a pick to pop the rest of this in place there. And then you can kind of push it down to lock everything in place. Now I'm going to throw this Torx bolt back in and then we can finish this up and connect these but i'm actually not going to finalize connecting these or the rest of this boot because we're getting ready to do a diy on the new facelift mark 7 adapter taillight harnesses on this car so this is not going to get all reinstalled right now okay so now we're going to look at this side now this side is broken on our car. We're not gonna show you the complete DIY on that right now because we actually uh, don't have all the things needed to make that happen. But basically, here's what we're gonna need to do. It's a little more complicated than the other side. We have these two clips here. These clips come out like so. Now, when I first looked at these, it was pretty scary because these are all the same wire. And, I, and these connectors are generally not gonna fit through these boots. So I thought we were gonna have to unpin this entire harness. The good news is we actually don't. So we actually are going to pop these clips and disconnect this side and pop this clip on the red side and unplug the black connector. And now this section is free enough that we can have something to work with. Now, 
What we need to do is actually remove part of this connector and it actually should pull through this boot. Now, behind here, you actually have the connector for the third brake light. This has a rubber boot on there and we actually have to remove that to pull it through because it's attached to this harness right here, which is a group of these wires. So that would have to be disconnected. Now to do that, from what I can tell, it, you actually have to remove the third brake light spoiler assembly. Now to do that, you actually have this 10 millimeter here, that's right there, and then you have a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter over here. Uh, these are going to be the hardware that holds this on, but there's actually glue that attaches this spoiler assembly to the rear deck lid. And so because of that, we actually are not going to be showing you the complete DIY on this side, but I'm going to show you the, exactly what you would need to do to make that happen. So let's take a closer look at these connectors. So if we take a look at this connector, there are two open holes here where, where you see something black there. Now on the other side of the connector, there is this piece. This piece actually does uh, does slide out. So what you need to do is you have to open this locking tab. You have to take something like a small pick that is going to get in there. And that, that, that's a latch assembly. So we have to leave that in place. And then we take another pick like this 90 and push from the other side. Now, as you see, it comes out pretty easily there. You just have to actually get that out of place. So this actually will do two things. This is going to lock these wires in place, but it also prevents these two wires from being removed from this connector. So you would need now wire terminal tools. I'll link to them in the description where we have those to actually remove these pins, which you would stick in and then you kind of wiggle and they would slide out the back. You will want to make sure you label these to make sure you do not get them in the incorrect place. It's pretty simple. You only have two wires, but you are going to take one out of each connector. One of these is small, one of these is big, but all of these wires are kind of a pinkish color uh, that you want to make sure that you don't have a mistake. You also, because you're going to do this on the other side, on this black connector, same deal, you are going to want to make sure that you don't mix up which one of these that goes in. So you want to, you're going to want to label this stuff and also be careful because when you label this stuff as it comes through that boot, I've heard of circumstances or we've had circumstances where a label might come off. So you might want to do something, maybe take a permanent marker and, and mark on the wire itself. And that will uh, prevent you from having any, any, you know, like a piece of tape or something you put on there that as you pull it through the boot, it gets stuck in the boot, pulls off the wire and now you're really in a jam. So uh, that would be what you need to do. Same deal. This connector would require you to do that. These are not as big of a deal now that I'm looking at it because these are taped together. So you have kind of the wires they belong in uh, taped to the actual black piece itself. So as long as you know that this is for the black one and this is for the brown one, you're going to be okay in that circumstance. But what you would do is take the spoiler off, get, get in there and get this connector off and then pull that stuff through just like we showed with the other side. Thanks so much for watching our video on how to install Mark 7 rubber trunk boots. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.